Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation about decolonizing picture recitation. Picture recitation is the art of storytelling in verse accompanied with a visual prop like you see here, a scroll and a wooden box with painted panels that unfold during the storytelling. The field of picture recitation was negatively affected during colonization by the British in India since many narratives were based on Hindu mythology, the erotic aspects of which were considered obscene by the British. Thus, not only the imposition of Victorian morality and Protestant prudery, but also our own self-censorship to mimic and please our colonizers affected the expression of the theme of passion through art, literature and storytelling. One of the major scholars of decolonization, Walter Mignolo, says it is time to delink oneself from the tyranny of Western hegemony and invest in that which has been silenced and make visible what has been rendered invisible to affirm the presence of what has been declared absent. For his own decolonization, Walter Mignolo looked at scholarship from the Global South instead of Europe which inspired me to look at Indian aesthetics instead of Western aesthetics to define my studio practice. Here, one aspect from Indian aesthetics which I have chosen as the guiding principle of my practice is called Rasa theory. Rasa, which is Sanskrit for juice, is the affective experience of the viewer of an artwork which is transferred from the artist or author or actor via the work of art to the viewer. Rasa is analogous to the taste of food which is savoured, sweet, spicy, salty, tangy and similarly there are nine affective states, the erotic, heroic, violent, disgust, fear, comic, tragic, fantastic and tranquility which can be expressed through the arts. Rasa theory was first mentioned in a treatise on drama by an Indian scholar in the year 300 and the author stated that any work of art that did not invest in the transference of rasa to the viewer was bound to fail. So in my practice of decolonizing, I am looking at the aesthetics of the past traditions of erotic poetry written in Sanskrit and medieval Indian miniature painting and merging them with contemporary knowledge from the sciences to create erotic poetry in English and placing them in digital illustrations. The basic narrative of my erotic verses comes from research about the human microbiome, which states that microbes in the gut communicate with the brain via the spinal cord and affect our moods and behaviors. I extrapolate these observations to include the microbes of the skin and imagine how various fluids and atmospheric phenomena interact with the skin microbiome and how the various foods eaten during the various seasons provides nutrients for the gut microbes which then cascade further chemical reactions in my body which ultimately makes me love, kiss, caress and hug my lover. Mustardy carrots bathed in bubbling brine soak the sun in my stead and father new neurons in my head. The neurons sparkle fireworks of dopamine and oxytocin when smooth bedsheets churn ferocious waves that smash the pillow boats. Referring to the forests of microbes lining my skin and intestines, I have titled my series of illustrations, The Forest on My Flesh. My tongue sweeps over a dome of palm chagari, jiggling the chagari into a creamy caramel custard. As the streptococcus of my throat cuddle the proteobacteria of your hinds, your bums twitch 
at the Richter scale of 1. Delighted, my tongue sticks out once again. From microbial lovers, now let me take you back to lovers in classical Indian arts through whom the erotic affect was conveyed. Dramatists and authors used different archetypes of lovers to describe the different phases and sentiments of a romantic relationship. For example, they suggested eight kinds of heroines displaying eight different sentiments regarding their union with their lovers. Seven of these eight heroines wait for their lover to come to them, while only one goes out to meet her lover, often braving grave dangers. This archetype of a female lover or heroine is named Abhisarika. Many miniature paintings depict her running through a dark forest infested with demons and snakes on a stormy night with lightning cracking above her head and in a posture where she turns to look back at her ankle bells that have slipped off her foot, but she is in such a hurry that she does not pick them up. In the following picture recitation, I ponder why runs the Apisarika. Lightning rips apart the bonds of nitrogen that spins down the raindrops to the actinomyces of the soil, who joyfully diffuse petrichoral bouquets of chiosmin and tyrosine that waft into lovers' nostrils, becoming dopamine in the mesolimbic pathways of the brain. The dopamine needs its own bard and ballad to sing of all it risks in pursuit of pleasure, suppresses inhibitions, makes us go get it, setting heroines on new adventures. The lightning of such storms illuminate, the experimental arts lovers discover. And for those with no erotic manuscripts to guide, the best love is still made on a stormy night. Lightning that splits nitrogen bonds lovers, cascading its atoms from cloud to soil, from raindrops to fragrance to fireworks of dopamine in lovers' cerebrums. But should the alleyways of dopamine dead end when oblong pillows replace a lover, the fireworks explode within their crates, the moonbeams sting, the stormy night suffocates. Precisely when the first lightning strikes, ions of the air shiver her skin, shiver the beads of her ankle bells, her feet cross the threshold and she bolts. Swelled with dopamine, the Abhisarika races. She fears not snakes nor the forest ghouls. Rather flees the fireworks of an empty bed and the moonbeams that'll cinder her lonely soul. Lightning, custodian of the erotic arts, paid homage to inverses and paints. Cosmic repository of sexual power sets lovers to work in an instant flash. A torch that keeps itself alive with energy spent by lovers in union. But for those too lonely to pay tribute, it constricts and alights in carnal flames. <gasps> Scared to miss out on her oblation, scared of cinders, the Abhisarika runs. Who is afraid of earthwormy snakes in front of the cosmic serpent's fangs? Lightning source of Rasa, the primeval life force in megawatts and kilojoules, compressed of millennia of kisses and embraces not only of humans, but all life forms.
So thank you everyone for your time and attention. I hope you savored some rasa, some aesthetic pleasure, and I wish you all a romantic day ahead. Thank you.